What is up, Storm Chasers? We have a living legend <laughs> in the house with us today, the one and only Miss Mickey Howard. Baby, be mine. Come here, my love. Mickey. Miss In that Howard. relation, ain't nobody like you. Until you come back to me, that's what love is. My songs from the 80s and 90s. It was so, so many. Cool. So many, so many. So I want to officially welcome you to the show. Thank you for coming on. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I do. Um, I know I just asked you before we actually rolled the cameras, but tell the people how you found out about me, because, you know, you watch me, Kelly Price watch me, and that's a flex for me. I ain't going to front. Oh, that's so cool. I think you're just so cool. I started, uh, I saw Jaguar on your show, and uh, it was really in-depth and all of that, and so I started watching you after that, because you were, you were really, I think, uh, fair, empathetic, and, and your commentary is hilarious. And it's benign, you know, in my mind, you know, it's not really, it's not harmful or anything. It's just interesting. And yeah. I really think you're brilliant. So I, I started watching and my kids like, you're watching? I'm like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. So I, I definitely take that as a compliment. And um, I don't know, just talking to you today is proof that anything is possible. My mom plays your music. My aunt plays your music every family reunion, Sundays. And I think everybody that had a black mama hat this Sunday, you wake up and their music yeah. is playing. Or Saturday, depending on what the schedule was, you smell incense, <laughs> you smell, you, you you hear some Mickey Howard or some Erica Badu and it's like, oh, all right, time to clean. We ain't sleeping in, so. Oh, definitely. that's super cool. Def definitely a lot, of, a lot of memory. So you are a, a Chicago girl, correct? Yeah, I'm from Chicago. What part of Chicago are you from? Hyde Park, 54th and Ingleside. 54th and the South Side, too. My dad lived on 127th and Sangamon, which they changed the name to Pilgrim Jubilee Way, his group. Okay. Okay, because I got family in Chicago Heights. So is that technically the South Side? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I don't know. <laughs> well, listen, you... You come from legends, you know, your mom was a gospel singer as well as your dad that was a singer as well. And so can everybody in your family sing? Like, yeah. really? Yes. Everybody. Every single body, on, actually on both sides of my family, which is crazy. You know, one of my cousins was on The Voice. Um, you know, I have uh, my one of my little sisters is like an amazing uh, gospel singer la trivia graham i mean everybody everybody they yeah. sing or preach or or they're a nurse <laughs> yeah so it was it was pretty much determined for you to do that because i always wonder like people that can sing i'm like is that genetic or is it just kind of like random that you just happen to be able to sing but yeah for me it's genetic and um everybody even my kids <laughs> are able to sing too but not everybody wants to, you know. I, I, I didn't used to understand why they didn't want to be in show business and be a star. Why don't you want to be a star? You know. You know. But they didn't want to do it. Okay. I, I, I understand that. So if you had not became a singer, you probably would have been in the church. No. What do you think you would have done if you never became fashion, a singer? You know, I was in the fashion. When I was a very young, young kid, I wanted to be an evangelist. Yeah. Okay. I can't figure out which way to go. Okay, this way. Okay, so I'll be in the middle. There and you go. I, I wanted to be an evangelist. Uh, and I, I kind of feel like I am still an evangelist. Of sorts. Yeah. You reach people. You reach people. You definitely get to With the, the truth. Spirit. With the truth. That, that's the best way to be. That's a, Now, the only thing is, in that industry, being somebody that speaks the truth, it can work against you, too, because it's Hollywood is very Hmm. I was that was 30 years ago. Yeah. And and speaking the truth and being decent got me re really kicked out, you know. Yeah. And that's fine because I'm where I want to be. We're going to we're going to talk about that too. We're going we're going to talk about that too. Can you tell the people some of the legends that you grew up around because you <laughs> were introduced to legends from an early was a different time. You know, everybody came from gospel music when I was growing up. You know, it was the 60s, you know, and 70s. 
and everybody came from gospel music. You know, uh, David Ruffin uh, used to be in a group called the Soul Stirs. Uh, Sam Cooke was in the Soul Stirs. Uh, uh, um, Bobby Womack was in the Soul They were all people that would, would be around my mom and her friends and certainly James Cleveland and, you know, Billy Preston, uh, Aretha Franklin. But at that time, it was... Um, people were very into black and all that stuff like that. And everybody stuck together because they had just come out of the time when you mm. couldn't even stay at a hotel with white folks. Right. You you, like even you when you perform, you had to go out the back, right? Right. And you, you, when you went into a, a town, you hooked up with the church, you know, and the church members would uh, feed you and, t you know, house you, or they'd send you to the, the, uh, if you had a little bit of money, they sent you to the hotel that accepted blacks in the back door. And that was happening all the way through the 60s, too. Wow. You know? And it was something that, so everybody associated with each other. Mm. Everybody. Is, I mean, my dad used to tell stories about Ike and Tina Turner. And you had to stay at the same hotel. Motel. Not hotel. Motel. So y'all heard everything. All the oh, fights, so, all the crumbling. It was great. To me, it was great. And I, I grew up fully expecting that experience as an adult. It was mm. totally different. And it's different now. And so I knew you had, you know, been around music your whole life and, of course, singing your whole life. But you were like you consciously decided to pursue a career in singing at about age 16, correct? Yes. OK. At what point did you join the group Side Effects? 16. Right at 16. OK, because you. Because you were replacing the lead singer. Right. What happened with her? Like, why Why did they get rid of her? What happened? I don't think she fit their style. And, you, you know, the, I don't need to tell people been. You know. Oh, okay. okay. You know how affairs are, child. You know, the group, somebody sleeping with somebody, and then they get mad, and they get bored, and they get, it was just, that's what it was. Okay. It's always some personal stuff to mess yeah, up. Yeah, you know, some old garbage. Okay. Okay. So you so you get into side effects. You get into the group. You're doing your thing. You guys did end up releasing at least one album together. Maybe two or three. Two or three. So what made you want to go solo? I never wanted to be in a group. Uh, uh, um, that was just. It was a learning ground. It was um, school. It was no better place than that, too, because I got to sing on so many records, you know, being in Side Effect and um, uh, the producers. And I sang on Gap Band records and all kinds of records, you know, Stanley, Tarantine, you know, jazz. It was such a great experience. But, um, you know, as groups have many personalities and, then you know, and people always talk about the girl groups. You know, talk about the men groups, man, they fight. Oh, physically fight, break walls and stuff, and you know, all kinds of stuff. And so you, they eventually went each other's separate ways. And then you know, uh, the drug epidemic came in, the crack and all of that. You know, yeah. they were freebasing at that time, and a lot of careers were lost to that. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. But you know what, though, uh, enough. Uh, there's not enough people that talk about that talk about the male groups and how they break up because it's always an ego thing. Who's going to be the biggest dick in the room? And it's like, no, everybody just needs to play their role, you know, but then it turns into, did nobody come here for you, Otis? And it's just like, oh, damn. And I ain't going to ever stop laughing at that. Ever. Ever stop <laughs> laughing at that. So, did nobody come and see you, Otis? <laughs> <laughs> so look, looking back now, right, because hindsight is twenty twenty. What do you wish you knew about the industry before you got into it? Even though you had parents that were that were in it, it's different when you get into it yourself. What do you wish you knew then that you know now? You say what now? I, I don't think I, I didn't have a problem. Okay. Not okay. like that. You know, okay. I was good. It was just that um when when the weird stuff started to happen. And, um, you know, I got married to, you know, and a person that definitely was not in show business and all of that started happening. But, you know, I was like 1992. I retired. I don't want to do this. I can't do this with these people. Yeah. It was not what we bargained for. You know, I don't know. It was the first time that we had a lot of black um, executives and things like that. And they were in power for the first time and a lot of females and, and they were, you know, getting their legs. 
at that time, you know, um, before that, you only had the Ahmed Erdogans and mostly you had uh, Caucasians in the power position. And then right. they separated the music. Black department, pop department. And at that time in the 80s, I was in the black department. And you could only deal with the black people who had never had power like this before, in my opinion. Right, right. No, you're right. And um, they were doing all kinds of stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> and making all kinds of deals and it just got real sleazy. And at that time, uh, people were using a lot of drugs and stuff, you know, and I even fell prey to it. You know, if you can't beat them, join them. Let them some try. Uh. And if it's in your face long enough, eventually you're going to want to try. Yeah, I tell people, you know, that bad association spoils useful habits. It's like, what the hell? You know, so it was, it got real sleazy and the, you know, the sexual propositions were insane. Yeah. And then I, I had a crazy marriage and I had three kids and I'm like, you know what? I love what I do and I'm going to do what I do. I may not do it to this level. And of course, uh, you know, Whitney and my friends, Gerald, Ferg, and all of these people, uh, Phyllis Hyman, George Howard, all these people died. Yeah. And, and, uh, even, you know, before they died, I had conversations and I, these are my friends and it just turned out to be, you know what? You're giving up too much of your life. For too little in return, right? And allowing people to judge you, and to, you're too fat. Uh, you need to be. Oh, well, you need. Oh, well, you, your record is not. How the hell do you know? You put your life in the hands of people, and they and they see you as an opportunity to make themselves look good, make money, and True. it sounds like make money first, but it ain't. It's first they make themselves look good off of you. Mm. A lot of times, I don't know now. I, don't know. I there were some people I enjoyed working with. It's not all bad. I love this business. I, I you know, when it's done properly, you know, the people that uh, it's a young business, it's a hundred years old almost, you know, right, more or less. Um, and there, it's growing pains. You know, I think what's happening now is amazing. We have social media now, so people can really build their careers, and they don't have to go through those doors and so speaking of that what advice would you give to up and coming singers like if you had to just give them a couple pieces of advice like, don't try to rape the industry this is not gonna make you uh beyonce mm. we had one beyonce in 30 years of, what is it right we had one diana ross we had one whitney houston out of millions and millions of people don't expect that it may pay your bills. It may lead you to something wonderful and all that kind of stuff. And if you stick with it long enough, it's going to be worth it. And, you know, don't rape this industry. Take okay. what you deserve. Get what you deserve. You know what I'm saying? That's what's been happening. Don't perpetuate that. That's what's been happening. That's what the big wigs did to us. You know what I'm saying? Make it even. Get what you deserve. You know, and stay and stay with it if it's, if it's something you love. And I hope it's your passion and not just something... You know, everybody wants to be like all the young rappers. And yeah. I'm, I'm nervous for the young rappers because we don't, y'all don't see this. All these rappers we never heard of. I never heard of them, but they got millions of sales or downloads or whatever on the, on the independent side. And then they show up dead. Right. Nobody else. Nobody is talking about that. Like so many of these rappers, these young black men, are dying and it's just like it, it, it's a well, revolving it, 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 it's a revolving door it and nobody has not stopped since Pac and Biggie has not stopped. Yeah. And, and every last one of them. I mean come on y'all this is weird. Where did this happen at? In the mob? Where does this happen? Where does this happen? In war? Where right. does this happen? If right. it's giving you the signs then that's what's happening. We at war and y'all don't even know it. And everybody wants to be an independent artist. On a low, you can get a million streams. You do the right thing. A million yeah. streams is a lot. It takes a lot out of this industry, and they don't love it. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, a lot of people that I see that are pushed in the front, they just don't have the talent. It's not about talent. It's, see, in the music business, we expect musical talent. Okay? But now the music business is the talent is not musical. The talent is producing, 
advertise, you know, how you get, you know, the publicists. Those are the talented ones now. They can take a rock and make it famous. And I don't see why not. The Bible says God will make a rock cry out. <laughs> we want, we Good. want to consume things. True. That's the problem to me is that we're not being presented. And that's why I like you guys' forums and stuff. We're like, whoa. I know, right? We get on here, we do our own thing. Because one thing I don't like about the industry is it's like they want a black sound without a black face. Yeah. And um, it's, we never talk about how painful that is. It's really painful to other singers. And I'm just, I mean, you don't want to feel jealous at this age. I'm not jealous. It feels like, dang, that hurt my feelings. Love Adele. But dang, that hurt my feelings. Because yeah. we've been making these kind of songs from, I know I have for 45 years. I know um, several fantastic artists. But, you know, like, we, I'm not saying anything about being heavy, but when she came out and she was heavy, we could like, be heavy. Genesis right. Say, I remember, it's not very many people sing better than that. When she came out years ago, her you're right. the whole thing, you're better. Martha Wash, they don't come any better than that. Play, take away my space, and then play Adele, and tell me which one gives you chills and cry. And we love her, but when Martha Wash was out, it was all about you can't do this, you can't do that. When I think it's like, oh, that song is too pop. It's only one room room for one. That's not right. And yeah. you can go over there and bring Amy Winehouse over here, who I adore her music. But we had 19,000 Amy Winehouses over here. And yeah, I say that all the they time. Gave, they gave her seven Grammys. They and, and, and when she passed away from the drug overdose and everything, they lauded her as a queen. But when Whitney passed away, we had to scream and holler just to get them to say, hey, on that same show, yeah, for an American artist that took this American experience across the world and died in the process. Yes. Like, like, oh, yes, you drugs, this and that. Well, sweetheart, I mean, I, I want you to find somebody that go to the grocery store and you find me, uh, tell me everybody in there is not, is sober. Everybody in the grocery store is sober. Nobody's on drugs. They do something. They do something. Yeah, I don't believe care me. if you, that. you 60 and you got back pain. And every now and then I just take me a little pain. And I don't, I don't really fool around. Like <laughs> yeah. Everybody doing something. Now, when you have the world on your shoulders and everybody looking down your throat and everything, and, you, and your throat don't work all the time. I went through five years if I can't sing. I'm like, like what am I going to do? Because that's your instrument. That's your money maker. We going to talk. Because I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, Adele is cool, but I've always said you got a, you got a million black women in the church that sing better than Adele, number one. Then number two, like you just said, the black women, they couldn't be heavy like that and be in the front. They made you be a background singer or a doo -wop pop pop girl, as Tamar would say. But then, okay, cool. You look at the black women that are smaller. They fit the mold more. Why isn't K. Michelle bigger? Why isn't Tamar Braxton bigger? Why? But we, we somebody who is white, who kind of sounds like us, they're at the top. It's just, it's, I mean, it's not right. Full on special on TV. We haven't had one of those since Patti LaBelle, baby. Mm. We don't have anybody that deserves a full on special. We ain't got nobody. Right. And you're crying about you can't get your special together in, in Las Vegas. And I'll I take them back. Up. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. First off, with Adele, that nigga that she with, that ain't the first black D you done had. You'll get another one. You'll be all right. You got a job to do. See, I feel like no matter what, you got a job to do. But see, me, somebody that look like me and you, we got to do it. Ain't nobody going to give us no sympathy. We and, ain't, feel, and, and we ain't feeling well. You still got to perform. You mention that. Anybody that's old enough and wise enough to talk to her and say to her, you know, listen, you're going to fall in love five more times after this, honey. But this career is going to take you through your death. Yeah. They'll put you away nicely. 
and be able to take care of your family, give you a legacy. Concentrate on that. Concentrate on your career. If you fall in love and have a little good time, all of that. But right now ain't the time. Yeah. It's not. And and after a divorce and you change a big life change and all these kind of things, you know, um, and being in show business, it's not the time. It's not the time. And if he ain't going to do right, go about your business. Now she's saying she want to have a baby by him by next year. A baby ain't going to make the relationship better. But it's her life. Do with it what you please. But I just think it's unfortunate that all those people now lost their jobs. People that plan to come to see you. Now you got to refund them their tickets. Like it's it's not just you. It's everybody under you that's suffering. Oh, I know she's aware of that. When you lose money for folks, they get real mad. Yeah, that, that that's the fact. I just feel bad for her uh, to go through this for no reason. Because it's just no reason. There's no at all. There's no reason at all. Over over a man like I'm, maybe I just don't get it. But no matter what, I'm finna go work. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I talk to you later. So Please. you know, okay. speaking speaking of love, one of the loves of your life, Gerald Levert. Mm. Um, also a legend. I wanted to know, like, first off, what made you attracted to Gerald Levert? He was so cute and sweet, he's the nicest guy. And um, his family was Jehovah's Witnesses. I was oh. Jehovah's Witnesses, especially at that time. And in show business, I mean, you know, I we just clung to each other, we were kind of innocent and and just you know, whatever, whatever. And um I think we were work buddies and just I really now as I'm older, you know, I said, oh, we were best friends. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Best friends that turned into lovers. Okay. That's oh, yeah. We wrote songs together. I mean, we oh, we just lovers first. Then we turned into good friends. We turned into uh, like good work, work, work husband and wife, you know. And you know, when a beat dropped in, it was something that went on between he and I that nothing else existed. Yeah. That's when you connect with someone on a spiritual level. You almost can't even explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get that. So what is something about Gerald Levert that you can share with us that that would surprise us? Like, did he did it like, <laughs> did it like Flaming Hot Cheetos or something? Or did he, I don't know, but did he burp a lot? I don't know. Give us something that we would be like, what? Or night shirts. Man, night shirts. Night shirts. Huh. Like from the 18th century. Like long shirts, long night shirts. Yeah, and he had little skinny ankles, and he would make the kids these elaborate salads. Like you know, he's always like, "We got to be on that." Everybody here needs to be on that. So all the kids would gather at his house because he had an indoor pool, and they would be in Cleveland. So everybody kids was there. His kids, my kids, and my kids. And okay. uh, so he would come in and make these elaborate salads. They'd be like huge, big old salads. And he'd have on that night shirt and those little teeny skinny legs. It would be so funny. Now, and as you say, a long, long, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining like a Beristine bear, like that, um, that car. Oh my God. Yeah, all kinds. <laughs> all he loved them, night shirt. Huh. That's interesting. They said Gerald loved the ladies. Oh, he was a ladies' man. We know that. Well, now. I don't know who doesn't love ladies. If he's straight. If you're gay, if you're anything, ladies are fabulous and beautiful, baby. Don't get it fucked up. That is Women true. are wonderful. And everybody should love us and adore us. And I, I always think, because I work with men, get it? You know, like, on the tour bus, is 16 men. I have, you know, the, the band, the uh, tech, everything. I work with men. And for years and years and years and years, and I've always been like, what makes a man cheat? What makes him not cheat? I watch the behavior of mm. men. Then I watch the behavior of women. Women are fantastic. I don't know how they don't cheat. Did you see that? Now you sound like my uncle. Our, no, I mean, really. And we have our thing together and stuff like that. And we are lonely. I personally have been celibate for seven years. Really? Yeah. I did enough sex in my youth, dog. But. I- I mean, God bless you, though, because I just I stopped being celibate last year, I think. But God bless you. You young, Pookie. Your hormones are still popping. Speaking of hormones, we're like, ah! um, <laughs> yes, child, these men have a heavy load, in my opinion. It's really difficult. And everybody wants to get married and be hooked up so freaking young. 
It's too young, baby. Your hormones is gonna tell you something different every time you see somebody when we pop. And if mm. they pop it too close, it's weird shit, man. If you're not having, you know, serious commitment to God and you know your morals, and even when you do. Okay. After Take it's the difficult. Point. I don't. I'm not. I'm not uh, giving him a pass or anything, but or anybody. But I think it's. I, and especially, I wasn't there all the time. You know, we had. We see each other with every, whoever's in town. Right. Y'all both work has no work. Tell. True. True. So we just, it was what it was. But it was no hard feelings even after it broke up. You no, know. it was no love feelings. Like, are you all right? The kids always feel so shade. They, they, they grew up together. So they're like real cousins and they really love each other. I love all of the mothers of his children. Uh, he picked some really fine women that are strong, integrity, and really nice women that uh, I love from. I do. I, I love Carlene. I love Bridget. I love all of them. Oh, my Adrian, God. And they're really nice ladies. And if you was around some person for many years, you go through their affairs. Not yeah. affairs, you know, their relationships. Right, right. Wasn't in my relationship, that's my friend. But see, it's nice that you were mature enough to respect the mothers of his children. Because a lot of times in this generation, people just feel like, well, you ain't with her no more. So you don't need to be around your kids. You don't need to be. It's just like, wait a minute. We all can co-parent and work together and make it work. So We did. All of us. All of the ladies. And, and we uh, kept our children together, like I said. Even the cousins, the real cousins. Nice. You know, um, and they have each other to lean on because when you grow up in this business, uh, you have some uh, just special dynamic, you know, that other children in schools don't understand. It all sounds great and glorious and stuff until your kid goes to school and comes back and tells you how uh, the kids had him in the bathroom on his wall. They're going to F his mother. Wow. And, you know, all that kind of stuff goes on. And then uh, you move your children to what you you think it's a great neighborhood and all this stuff and then you find out they don't want you there because you're a musician not just black but because you're a musician you're a musician okay. and you're a single woman uh they get real upset because their husbands are watching you come in and out and helping you you know oh uh, you need me to cut your grass you know it's like, is that what grass you're talking about right right you know so, <laughs> Right. They, they get upset. And it was really those kinds of things going on. And then being a single parent that leaves town a lot. You don't know what the hell going on. You know, one yeah. of my kids confessed like a few years ago that somebody molested them. I'm like, who the hell was it? And they won't tell me to this day because they know I'm going to get on the plane, train, bus, walk, crawl. I need to see about you because I need, I need, but they don't want. They don't want you in prison. That's why they're not going to tell I ain't you. Going to prison. <laughs> you said I ain't gonna get caught. <laughs> well, I do want to ask you this: How did you overcome the constant Whitney comparisons in the beginning of your career? At first, it was like, er? because you know, it's like, okay, she's fantastic. I love Whitney. That we grew up together, you know, the same vicinity, the same situations. You know, our mothers were both singers. They were around each other all the time. They loved each other. We were around each other as, as teenagers. She remembered me when I didn't remember her. Mm. You know, she's like Michelle. I'm like, you know, we were somewhere. And, and, um, I, I, it was nothing to overcome. That was like, thank you. But you know, you keep living. You do what you do. People understand who you are. Yeah. You, know? you you let you let the music speak for itself. Ah uh, yeah, and it's like compare me if you want. Every time you say Whitney Houston and Mickey Howard comes up too, I ain't bad. It ain't a bad comparison. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And so, Miss Howard, I want to ask you: after you and and Gerald were done, do you think? Mm, do you think that you were in the space of just wanting? to be with someone and that's why you ended up marrying Eddie? Like, do you feel like you married Eddie too fast? Absolutely. That's why I tell people don't get married and all that young. And, you know, like I said, I was a, a devout Jehovah's Witness and fornication and all of that stuff. And I want to be safe and I don't want to be a 
can't ever want to be a sinner. I, you know, I wasn't going to stop having sex. That wasn't going to happen. I needed to find a husband. And I needed, I had little small boys. I thought they needed a father figure. Oh, okay. All this kind of thing, you know, the standard of life, which had been uh, inculcated in me since my youth, you know, get married, stop having babies without being married. You know, I had two boys, but, you know, that was like, ah. And this kind of thing, and I got married because of that, and it was not the thing for me. Yeah. Tell us, tell us uh, some of the things he did to pretty much sabotage your career that you weren't even aware of until the end. Oh, they had meetings. One thing that they do when you're a female is they don't take you seriously unless you have a male in front of you, telling mm -hmm. uh, the manager, the this, the that, the other, and. As soon as you get married, your husband takes precedence over anything you're talking about. And he got the right people together, this one and that one, and we want to get Nikki off this label, and blah, 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 blah. I had no knowledge, you know. And then when I did, I was like, what? Well, uh, well I was so I was leaving, you know. So I was so sure it wasn't going to happen, you know, that they would talk to me. And nobody did. Because only you should be able to speak for you. It's like... The same thing happened with uh, with Tamar. Same thing happened with Wendy Williams. Husband just making all these decisions. Ain't even told you nothing. People not even associating with you because of something he didn't did or said. And you like, damn, last time I checked, I was a grown adult. Like, why didn't nobody That's come up to me? No. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, so I would, how do you deal with not holding on to bitterness in that situation? Because I would be wanting to stump a mole hole on somebody's ass. That's just me. Uh a fantastic life coach, John Gary Henry. And my personal life was more important to me than that. As long as get him out of my life, get him some, I didn't think I would have the issues that I had once he was gone and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know I was blackballed and you know, I didn't do anything to anybody. Yeah. I didn't do anything, you know, and um, they were horrible people that did some low life things to me that knew I was a single mother, you know, after when I came in, I got married, got rid of the man. They knew I was getting beat up. Wow. I had no empathy, no mercy. No older woman, no older person came to me and said, come, this is how you get out of that. Hey, let's go talk to 1-800-KILLER nigga. I don't know what you know what I'm saying. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? My mother was dead. You know, my father was living in Chicago. Um, and he was complacent. He's old-fashioned man. Yeah. What you say to him? I heard you myself tell him to kiss your ass. So, that don't mean he need to be going upside my head. At all. We had issues like that, you know, but just use and ignorance. Yeah. Wow. So can a person, once they've been blackballed in the industry, can you ever really fully recover from that? I can't speak for everyone, but I have not. Okay. I, there was a time, a space, like maybe my 40s, and I was like, I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna get back, and I'm gonna really. And I'm gonna. It never happened. And I wow. reached out to everyone. I knew people the whole night. It never happened. And um, I ain't missing. But you know what? Even even as I'm hearing you describe that, it just sounds like to me you. No matter what industry you in, people always have some going on for yourself. Like you just you always got to be it. If you but if you <laughs> a hustler, you gonna always figure out how to make some money. And you still out here working. You still out here I doing love my job now. I'm having a good time now, especially now. I'm going to be at Blues Alley tomorrow night and um, Saturday in Washington, D.C. That's why I'm in D.C. now in the hotel. And um, nice. terribly excited. I love I love my job now. And uh, um, I don't care about things like that, you know, anymore. Like, oh, when you play a record, are you still, if they heard of you, if they honor you, I tell them, right. you know, all right. that. I am honored, okay, that people come to my show and stand up in the middle of the show and say, oh, my God, I love you. And it's a religious experience, almost. I'm honored. That's No Grammy compares to that. I got nominated for a Grammy in 2001. I went to the award show. They treated us so poorly. They really? In the very top, very, very nosebleed top. And, you, and, uh, and, and in front of me was the OJs. And next to them was... Um, Bootsy Collins, and you know, it was just, we were treated really poorly. And I was like, oh, I didn't know it was like this here. I thought this was nominated. They have a nominated section and this and that. You know, right, right. And, uh, cause I always say that 
for it. I said, I'm not going to ever go to the Grammys unless I'm nominated. So when I was, I was sort of really thrilled. I was like, okay, I'm going because it was a record nobody heard, this and that. And it was just like, you find out this is a jack leg, jack leg bullshit business, okay? The, the music they put on the radio, they don't even play it in their own homes. Okay. Mm, good point. And I still try. Like I'm, and I now consider myself a jazz singer or whatever, and I do these records, these jazz records or whatever, this and that. And 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 they'll play Sarah Vaughn, Billie Holiday, and this and that one. They will not record any new traditional jazz female artists. Mm. You know, and and the business is fine like it is to them, the people that are making money, that have been making money for a hundred years, for 95 years. Y yeah, That's they're not like, trying to, they're I mean, not trying to give up about, the power. You're talking about Warner Brothers, okay? Yeah. I knew Mo Austin and them. I went to the Warner Brothers, the last one of them, house. They had actual Rembrandt and all kinds of stuff. I mean, private jets. This is where I learned uh, uh, from Mo Austin's life. Was it Mo Austin? I'm so old, I forgot. <laughs> but uh you know they took me over to the mansion you know because she was lovely 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 woman and um gosh gosh all his sons passed away and she passed, everybody's dead now but they would have the, the warner brothers jet you know we're gonna take the jet to so and so i was like i was always when i get in upper echelons i get really weird like what y'all doing mm -hmm. yeah and but she taught me you know call the grocery store and order everything she said do you want come Kelsons and order everything for lunch and they come in there like you know the cater and all that she taught me call Neiman Marcus and say I need um can you give me every shoe you have in gold I need some gold shoes and you know that you know you, call them, wow. say, you have your personal shopper and they bring you every shoe they have in gold now you could probably do the phone thing or whatever it is but I just I'm so crazy on the internet it's stupid but I understand oh my god I can't even get in my room I have to move now because of Amazon. I, 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 I look, I, I totally get it. So one thing I was interested in knowing, um, after your divorce from Eddie Phelps, you moved to, you relocated to Atlanta. And so was it Shaka Khan and Patti LaBelle that really had your back? Or was, were you more close to Shaka or Patti? Like, what's your relationships? I know you're cool with Shaka, but. Oh, that's my best friend in the world. It's like my sister. It's just like my sister. Um, she is a person that I know wishes nothing but well for me. Um, we always sick at this. I don't care about. I don't know if she has no sickness there or anything like that. Uh, right. Patty has been really fun and kind. She sends me clothes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God, what's up to you? <laughs> But uh, she's so, I love Patty. And, you know, they always say, chin up, nigga. And that comes from my mom. And then, because Patty LaBelle and them, you know, my mom, the caravans and all that. That comes from my mom. Uh, okay. Aretha Franklin was amazing to me. You know, uh, her, 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 her um, sister in law, Arlene Franklin. You know, you could, I was losing my mind, and all those women understood. And I just had to judge <laughs> Erlene would go with me on uh, engagements and she put herself in front to try to make sure I got dates and stuff like that. That was a time that was, um, I guess I was in my late forties, early fifties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. They really had your back. It's, you, you had a sisterhood with them and that half and that's a beautiful. A sisterhood, an oddhood, a motherhood, a godmotherhood, Mavis Staples, my godmother, you know, and they have a, there's an unwritten rule in like show business um, for the real ones, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if they hear you going through something or something, they always send or give five hundred dollars. Oh wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I know Patty actually did the same thing um, for Fantasia when she was going through her situation. I told her, uh, "You ready to get back to work now?" <laughs> oh, Fantasia is such an amazing talent, honey. And you let that talent go marinate. Let them get right. some life in it so they can have some life to put in the music. You can't keep singing. Uh, uh, um, songs like you 12 years old, sooner or later, you, you're gonna have to put some of that 35 and 40 in there, and so they get that experience and know what you're really talking about. I mean, okay. you know, a lot of artists that used to record songs and then re record them at, at, at an older age, Aretha certainly did, yeah.
because you got that life experience you can put into it. You know, you're 16. You yeah. What you really know about love at 16? Speaking of this, I would be remiss if I didn't listen. Have you heard that new song by Ariana Grande? Oh, talking about F U C K me. Oh, I know. Are you talking about the song Positions? Is that what it is? Put something about put me in there. Do the nasty to me from the head, you know, the F word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I think she got Doja Cat and Megan on there. That might be Positions. I can look it up real quick. That might be Positions. My grandson is nine years old. He's like, he digs her so much. And now he's going to be trying to do the nasty. I'm like, what the? <sighs> Why'd she do that? Yeah, that is positions. But 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 see, that seems to be the industry now. They want to sell sex. They want to sell it as young as possible. And I'm not trying to be funny, but they purposely make her look like a little girl, which. That's what I'm not... upset about. I'm yeah. upset. I'm upset. My grandson loves Ariana. I've spent so much money on her on Fortnite. <laughs> oh my goodness. And he plays her songs. He made me download Spotify to play. I'm like, I don't have Spotify. I'm like, and so I'm like riding from the airport last night in the area. I'm like, what? 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 What is she talking about? She she, she's, a, she's a Disney girl, so you think, oh, this is cool. No, 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 no. I think no. we have to uh, have for adults only music. You know, like we grew up with my age, you know, we couldn't listen to Miles Bailey and them or, or, or Red Fox. It was adults only. But that was different. I'm going to say this because even when I listen to music from, you know, generations before me, I have to think to myself, they talking about sex? You know, like it was a it was a different no, way. Everybody has done all of this all the time. Yeah, yeah, but, but it was it heard, seemed to be different you know, though. Even you can go back to uh uh, uh Johnny Guitar Watson and all that kind of stuff. But there was still, you know, a, a, a adult music. Mm. There was, you know, stuff we didn't hear. Even like Marvin Gaye, the words were cleverly disguised. This they're blatantly saying, I want you to F me. In every position. In every yep. position, and then you got her looking like a tinker toy. Yeah. <laughs> Nine-year-old grandson is watching this. Yeah, it's he wanna f anything. You know, little boys, how y'all are? And <laughs> he gonna be, he's gonna be twelve in a minute. I'm like, what the hell? And then my granddaughter, I, I watched Euphoria. Oh wow! Now that's yeah. what I'm gonna tell you. Something. So Even while watching that, I'm like, at first I was like, that's whoo. Then I was like, 1976. What was happening? Well, it's this, I'm like, what year is this stuff taking place in? We just called trafficking the pimp. And the kids were doing tab acid. Mm. The they were smoking angel dust. Yeah. And they would always hand you a joint and say it was weed. And you take one puff and it's angel dust. And I'm like, it is that different. It's just being shown. Yeah. No no mystery. No mystery. It's just, it's put, and, and unfortunately, kids, all these kids got phones, and so they're going to have access to everything. How do you block, how do you block access from it? You don't block, you block access, access to it. The best thing is education. This is what this is. This is what it leads to. These, this is a very bad journey, and most people that go on this journey are having some sort of issue that's leading them to this path. So mm -hmm. if you find yourself, you know, with a drug issue or any issue, seek help. It's all kind of help. And don't stop till you find the proper help. You're not going to find the proper help in the first phone call or the first uh, AA or NA meeting you go to. You got to go until you connect and you got to pray on it. You got to really pray on it. You know, lead me, send me, help me. God will help you. One of the things that, uh, uh, I don't know, we Maybe jumping ahead, you have your schedule. No, 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 you're good. I, I was going to ask you what actually was the 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 point where you wanted to get clean. I didn't know I was dirty. I didn't know I was a drug addict. I was like, we had fun, and then when the fun was stopping, then I kept buying drugs. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, hey, there's something wrong with this. And then uh, I went to the library because at that time, you know, it was a different time. Yeah, and I went to the library and I took the kids with me because I always told my kids everything. You know? I've been experimenting with cocaine and I don't know what this mess is. Are we going to go to the library and look it up? We went to the library, we looked it up, we read all about it and everything. We said, whoa, 
I said, I got to go to the doctor. Because it said, go to the doctor. It adheres to your cells. It's not going to something you can just quit. Blah, 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 all this stuff. So um, I started calling rehab places and stuff. And I went to a couple of meetings and things like that. And they were stupid. I was like, what the hell is you talking about? Why are you doing drugs? I don't know. I was partying. And then the next thing I know, I can't stop buying the bullshit. I was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. you know, you, blah, blah. you gotta work hard to get sober as you do to get, you know, as you do to get the dope, because you gotta get some hard, hard work to get the dope. It's like, I don't care about none of that. And you know, you can't drink, you can't, you can't eat nothing, you can't drink nothing. You gotta, And the meetings be right across the street from the liquor store. I'm like, listen, I'm not gonna be held hostage by alcohol. I don't have an alcohol problem. I don't, people may say the contrary. I don't know, because I only drink when I'm outside. I don't drink at home and shit, you know. Go outside, I get outside. I want to have cocktails and act a fool. But right. I don't have a drinking problem. I didn't have a, you know, I was like, I didn't have any issues until I started doing this drug, cocaine. And I'm like, so what do we need to do? And I kept calling and going to places. And then uh, one night, I had an extremely bad binge in my mind. It was like, I got to get somebody. Somebody got to help me. And I actually got a yellow page in a hotel room and just kept calling 800. Numbers and it's like, hello, um, so I have a drug problem. This, and then I finally got this um, life coach. She says, uh, uh, um, he was at the drug place and he said, uh, well, what kind of drug you doing? I said, uh, I'm doing cocaine. I've been smoking cocoa puffs, cracking a sticker for the doo -boo -boo. He said, What the fuck you doing that dumb shit for? Excuse my language. <laughs> he literally said that. And I was like, that's him. That's the one. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I was just on me. And then now all of a sudden, I was fucking crackhead or something. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, come in tomorrow. And we, you know, we talked for hours at that moment. And then um, I ordered food and the food came and he said, um, gave me a, just come in tomorrow and we'll evaluate and all this stuff. And then uh, uh, we talked and everything. He took me in uh, to an inpatient clinic, you know. It worked out from there. It was really a riveting experience, uh, and and I came out good. You came out good. I I I love that, and I also love how you said, "I don't have a drinking problem. I had a problem with cocaine because I know people were getting on Mary J. Blige because she likes to have a drink when she goes out, and she's like." I didn't have an alcohol problem. I had a XYZ issue. So I like how you said that because there is a difference. Oh, there to me it is. I don't know. You know, um, in the systems that are made up for the addicts, you know, I, they're not finished. They don't know everything. Right. A lot of them are just there to, to perpetuate your problem. Like, tell me first, you, there's no recovery. You're always in recovery. That's dumb as hell because... Well, what you mean? Because you can always go back to doing it. Then you was always an addict if you was going, you know, if you did it in the first place. I mean, that's just dumb. I have yeah. Saying that is kind of like saying I'm always going to be dependent on you as a rehab or as a specialist. So I'm going to have to keep coming back because I'm never going to be able to get off this. Like, I'm it not going to say that. People I'm that are rehab specialists. Like, you have friends that go to school for they're 112 and they still in school. Like, I have a friend, like, she just loves to go to school and some people love to go to rehab they love it yeah he don't need no money well, I'll say, I'll say somebody like that, what they're craving is is friendship, intimacy, they're craving structure, discipline, yeah we all crave something we do, we do and we all, why do we beat ourselves up about that you know why do we feel embarrassed that we want to be loved Right, or that we want some attention. That too. Because sometimes you just want some, you just you just want to be seen, or you just want to feel attractive. That's male or female. Like well, it, we all want to feel attractive. <laughs> look, people will try to make you feel bad about it. Call you a pick me. People, people try to. Sh it's it's shaming. It's cultural shaming. They called you a pick me. No, no, not me. I'm just talking about they people. Call me no pick me. Well, they know you a cut them out, Mickey. They ain't gonna say nothing to you. You mean? You mean the equivalent? Oh, <laughs> they know. They, look, I'm, I'm, mad at you. <laughs> I'm sure people know not to try you, so they don't. I they don't, don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm really so like chill now. We were talking about last night in the cab ride or whatever. What is it? Wasn't in no cab in the car, whatever. They said all the times that I used to fight and actually went to jail. You know, I was like, I don't fight it. Y'all, you can have it. Whatever. <laughs> 
you know, if somebody try to rob me here, take it all. Here, don't take this. Too much. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't. I'm just so chill now. I try to be really chill. I will yeah. scream on you, though, but ain't nothing. I, I, yeah. I appreciate that, and I and I'm somebody that I ain't got time for that fighting stuff. I'm trying to I'm trying to get some money. Like we ain't talking about how to make a bag. I don't. That's like, all we, anybody you want to talk about nowadays. It's just sex and money. They don't even really want to have fun with the sex and money. What you? Oh, that's a good point. They just want it. They just want it. Okay. Let me ask you this, Miss Howard. Why do people think you have a son with Michael Jackson? That's what they want to think. No matter what I say, what I do, they, they still, yeah, yes, it is. And, they get, and they, they send me bad emails and all kind of stuff when they say bad things about my son. And, and they, they try to hurt my feelings. And I'm just like, listen, if y'all want to think whatever you want to think, I, on one end is flattery. On another end, it's um, it's very hurtful to the Jackson family to me because they are so wonderful. They're wonderful to me. They're wonderful to my children. They've been wonderful to everybody that came across their path. I do not talk about those people. Um, I only wish the best for them and the best for my son. And um, it's 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 always better for me to leave that alone because it never brings anything good because it's just dumb. Yeah, yeah. And why would you want to know something about a 61-year-old woman? What would happen between my leg 30-something years ago? I don't remember even. What the hell? What are you talking about? That's so dumb. Why would you do that? That's embarrassing. <laughs> and it to, yeah. to, to, to people that you call your legends, you perpetuate right. garbage. And what would you do to my son if he was? What are you guys doing now? Good point. Good, good point. Good point. People just love to put things on you. And, you know, like you can say all day, look, this ain't true about me. But if it sounds good, they want to believe it. So it's like, I'm going to let you believe it. Fine. I don't, know, don't talk to me about it. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. I have three children. And then you put one out here like this. And then the other, you know, I have a beautiful daughter, Caitlin Howard. Who has a new record out, y'all? My daughter has a new record out. Yeah, Came on, Cause your it's baby can really sing. Love speaker. No, that's that's the old one. Okay, wait, wait, wait. For love. For love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Your baby can sing. When I booked this interview, uh, when I announced it, first thing people said, "You got to hear about our daughter, Caitlin." I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm okay. so excited. So, I'm like, ah! so the people, the the people knew. The people knew. So talk to us about some new projects you got going on. I know you're up in the DMV area now. Yeah, tomorrow night I'm gonna be at the. Blues Alley for two nights, and I'm working on my, you know, jazz project. It's a, what's that doing? Oh, I thought that was going to say, a tribute to Abby Lincoln, who oh. is one of our um, major artists that is inspiring to me. And she wrote some amazing, amazingly touching and relevant songs. Okay. Uh, she was also a civil rights pioneer uh, and also married to Max Roach. And uh, one of our, my very favorites. So I'm doing a tribute album to her. And I'm only doing music I want to do. And every time they keep saying, you sing some R&B. You got to do another one. Like, man, I don't feel like that, man. I don't. I mean, I look stupid at 61 years old. Baby, be mine. Come on. Give me a fucking Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> you know, I... I, I was sitting there reading it. the comments. They like, we want her to sing this or that. I'm not finna ask her to sing. She got to go do sound check first. So I'm not finna ask her to sing. That's but my job, man. They pay me to do that. Thank you. There you go. Ain't nothing for free over here. Would you ever do a versus? Will. I'm trying to think who would you do People it with? People are mean. People are so mean. I don't have time for that book. Cook a puck, a tuck, a tuck. Okay. I know. I know. It might be a good check, though. I ain't going to find it. I would love to get... I've, I've never really done things for money. You know, I, I, I keep my lifestyle going, you know what I'm saying? And I never really did things for money because I would be very wealthy if I did. You know, I've never sang the national anthem. I don't sing the national anthem. You know, okay. like I said, from coming from Jehovah's Witness and stuff like that, you find out another perspective of things like that. And also being a person who loves lyrics. I'm not singing the rockets, red glare, the bombs bursting in air, people dying and stuff like that. Does not excite me and doesn't represent what I feel about where I, my country that I'm in. I don't feel that. Whoever did that, you got to do what you got to do. The process must go. Right. Okay? But I wasn't part of that process. I'm part of the other process. I'm part of the peace process. 
I'm part of the love process. You know, everybody thinks uh, everything is magical. There's no magic. Magic is false. Magic is when people, you talk about it, that's why I like you. It's when, uh, uh, it's not magical. Everything can be traced to everything. Everything is hardwired. Everything around us is called something. Like you call the air this or the molecules. Those molecules have a name to God. And, and people in centuries before us, and millennia before us, knew the names of those certain things, the okay. energies, like the Shiva. What we call today uh, radiation was Shiva. And, they, hmm. and people think everything of the air or everything you could not see uh, um, was a god. When actually it was just the name of something. And some people, uh, some of these things, really, seriously, uh, uh, and we use them now, we change the name. But the entity, the spirit, the energy is still what it's always been. You're right. It's just the names have been changed over the millennia. They the same ones in Samaria. The same ones. Just a different name. It's a different name. Like and now that. it's an urgent cry. They're doing some urgent stuff because they're in their last breath. And they're doing urgent stuff. They're everywhere. You can't you can't even turn on your Netflix and no shade to anybody. And, and and all of these horrible movies and all, everything is about them. Everything is about them. And then you say, who world is this? Good point. No, seriously. And so my point was, give it, play it no mind. Cling to everything that is good, everything that is love, everything that is and as closely as you can. And everybody, this love journey is not easy. It don't work every day. But you do work on it every day. Every day. That, that, when you used to face the slam the door, stop slamming the door. Small thing. Listen, when you slam the door, it gives me a headache. Okay? Could you please? And then when they still do it, put some tape. <laughs> do something to make it, you know, I don't yeah. want to be there. Because the, the, the least often you visit that space in your mind and your heart, the more it fades away. Okay. And you need that for your survival of the next few years. You need to be able to back up and see what's happening in front of you and not react. You're going to need, y'all, we are in survival mode in a whole lot of ways. You're right. You're not lying. So, and, I, and, and, I, and never forget, you know, Scripture says the race is not given to the swift or the strong. It's given to he that endures to the end. Mm. I like that. That's a good ending point. Ms. Howard, I thank you for your time. The people can find you on uh, social media platforms at Mickey Howard, right? Yeah, Mickey, um, Mickey that, M-I-K-I-T-H-A-T. Because I like to say, oh, Mickey that. Do it like Mickey. Or Mickey that like bitch. That. Or Mickey that. I like that. I like that. Well, I'm going to say this. Thank you for coming on. You have a beautiful day. And um, we will be in touch, okay? Hey, I can't wait till I come to Atlanta. Uh, July 16th, I'll be in Atlanta. You better show up because you're one of my kids now. You know I'm going to show up. You know I'm going to show up. <laughs> okay. Take care now. I'll see you in July. Okay. Bye-bye. Baby, we had a le we had a legend. We had a le we had a legend. What? Oh, that's it. We had a legend on the show. Do anybody want to come up here and, and, and make any comments? I'll give y'all. I'll give you ten minutes if uh, you guys had anything to say. Um, we didn't. You know, I, I wasn't going to ask her to take calls just because. She may not feel like doing all that and she got things to do. But if you guys want to come up, you can. Um, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me go to it. Let me see if I can pin it. Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, if I didn't lose the comment, hold up. I'll just post it again. Do 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 paste. All righty. Okay, let me hold this, paste it. 
All right. So the uh the link to come in and leave a comment on our interview today is pinned. But yes, damn good interview. Do you hear me? Thank you, Janet. Great interview. Thank you. This the storm show. We talk to legends over here. We talk to legends over here. This is Mickey Howard. It goes to show anything you put your mind to in life, you can do it. Any, I'm capable of anything. Ain't no fancy behind me, plain walls and all. Let me talk my shit. Plain walls and all. I took it back to the basics. I ain't even on my fancy camera right now. I'm here on a webcam on a laptop. One ring light behind me and laundry on the floor. Back to the basics. And we got Mickey Howard. Mickey Howard. She Shifa with the show. Uh Kelly Price mess with the show. Come on now. Why they be playing with me in these streets? Sick of y'all playing with me in these streets. I'm talking my shit tonight. What's going on, boss lady? Hey, Storm Monroe. Oh my God. You made my day. Thank you. You made my day. And yes, we do have a legend on this show. I am a music buff. I, look, I, I have my mic on. I'm sorry. Let me go my voice. I have a music buff. I love Mickey Howard's music. And I do watch a show. I'm subscribed to your channel. But, you know, sometimes I'll be up in the bushes. But I'm yes, sorry. okay. Okay. This was awesome. Like, I literally got tears in my eyes. And, and you know what? She kept it real. Yes. She was straightforward, you know, and this got to really get to know her on a, a personal note. You know what I'm saying? We listen to her music. We hear it. We embrace it. But to actually hear her speak in real time, it was awesome. You had great show storm around Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate how it's like you drop, it's like you drop a dead weight, you drop negativity, and things just start happening for you. I turned on my computer, and you know how you see people that's live on the side because I didn't hit my notifications at the top. And I said, hold up, Mickey Howard. Mickey Howard, and I got so excited, I had to drop down. I was like, oh, my God. And I know everybody else feels the same way if they listen to her music. Yes. They know what the music brings. I love back-in-the-day music. And like she was saying, a lot of this new music, it's like I, I really don't listen to it. You know? I don't either. I'm going to keep it real. For me personally, I like the music from... 1995 up until about 2008 is what I stick with. And that's because that's me. But this new, like, y'all be like, oh, you heard of such and such? I don't be knowing these people. Well, I'm older than you, Storm Monroe, so I can, I, I can go all the way back to the 70s. Mm, that's my parents' era, yeah. So, yeah. And I grew up in the Mickey Howard era, and I adore her music. And great job, great interview, thank all you. that. It was litty, lit, lit, you guys. And thank you for inviting me. I'm going to drop down so somebody else could come up. I definitely shared your video on my community wall. Thank you. I, so, I, appreci I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And um, you have a great evening, okay? You do the same. Take care. Take care now. That's what I'm saying. We had, we had a legend. But they be trying to play your boy in these streets. They be trying to play you. They be trying to tear you down. You can't tear down what God built. You can't do it. You're going to fail every time. You're going to stumble and tumble and trip over your own feet. Mm. Uh, the younger generation barely listens to this music. It's true. And also, I know it ain't just me. When you listen to this new music, it just all sounds demonic. So I'm like, I'm not listening to that. I'm just not. I'm just not. New music is full of crap. Dragon others about getting a bit right. Bam. 
uh, play, come share my love. I can't. We would have to go on Instagram and do that. I can't hear because they will flag it quick. Say that, so I'm over here bringing a few tears to my eyes. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. She really showed you a lot of love. Hell yeah, she did. She didn't have to do that. Who, who am I? She didn't have to do that. And she kept telling me, she like, Storm, I'm boring. I ain't got nothing going on. I'm like, no, you a legend. You need to, you need to be over here with us. Because my people mess with you. I mess with you. You mess with us. You one of us. Thank you, princess. Uh, let's see. Let's see. She's seen the good and bad and the ugly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who doesn't love you, Storm? You're a wonderful one. Keep it 100. Whole bunch of people, apparently. Wait a minute, though. This would be getting me. They don't like me, but they know every, they claim to know everything I do. Like, what's the real issue? Okay. Uh, can you get Patty LaBelle? I can try. I can definitely try. Um, let's see. Let's see. I hope you get, I hope you get Cat Williams. Me too. Me too. Um, let's see. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? They don't matter. Very true. Thank you, Tini, uh, Tini C. Kim said, I like that you can't tear down what God has in store for you. You can't. You can't. Next, you're going to have Shaka. I would love to have Shaka Khan. Because people were doing witchcraft. I think it's her, either her or Angie Stone. Witchcraft was being done on her to sabotage her career, and she didn't even know. So we definitely need to get into that. Reby Jackson, I would love that too. Well, listen, I am going to cap the show here. We had a beautiful show. Um, you were very relaxed. Yeah. Because I, 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 I got this. Not to mention, I pre I prepared. You know, you know, I prepared. I I was not gonna disrespect her time by coming up here and not knowing what I'm talking about. You just don't do that. I I, I take it seriously. And I don't like wasting people's time. So, um, Storm, you can do it. Big names are coming. Oh, thank you, thank you, Aurora. I appreciate that. So anyway, oh, Tame, I would love to have Tamar here. I got I got a lot of questions for Tamar. We're gonna reach out. But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming on. Like. Comment, subscribe, share if you care. Um, tonight, we got Conscious TV coming on at, got it for like 6.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that show is going to be messy. <laughs> it's going to be messy. But we're going to talk about real things and we're going to get to the bottom of a lot of things there too. So love you guys. I will catch you later. I'm going to get me something to eat. Catch y'all later. Catch you actually at 6.15 p.m. Eastern.